Hello everyone! It's Lisa from Lisa's Paint Parties and I'm coming to you live from Balsam Lake Provincial Park. So you can see all the trees behind me. It's nice and uh, nice and pretty today. So um, it looks like the reception's good. I have my phone connected to a battery pack so I think I've thought of everything. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. The weather seems to be cooperating. The sky is nice and blue. There's no clouds. You can see. Look how pretty. Yay. I feel like this would have been a good day to do that circle, the tree um, and the circle sky painting because it kind of reminds me of all the tall trees in the background. Um, but we have a really uh, lovely painting um, for you guys today. This one is um, called, well, I named it. I don't know if it's the actual name, <laughs> but it's called Deer Spotted. So it's this one here. So I did pre-paint um, and go through it. Um, so I do have it, um, I went through it. Was, it was really fun to paint and it's a really, really cool technique so we can uh, work on together. So we'll be doing that. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more time to see if anyone else is gonna join us today. Hi, Melanie. Oh, you love Balsam Lake. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is the first time we've been to this, well, I've been to this campground, our family. And um, yeah, the campground spaces are really large. We're really close to um, washroom facilities and there's hardly like anyone here really. I guess obviously because, you know, COVID's kind of keeping people away. We're like the crazy ones who are like, yeah, sure, let's try it out. Um, but it's been good, so that's, that's positive. Um, I think uh, my son and my husband are down um, at the water and my son will probably be in there all the rest of the day, I am pretty sure. So um, yeah, we'll be doing this getting ready soon. So. Um, so yeah, so I will put my phone down in a better holder in a moment so then I won't be all shaky. I'll just do this while I'm talking to you guys. So I have an 8x10 um, canvas board that I'm going to be painting on today. This picture is a landscape, so you want to make sure that you have your canvas ready to go landscape. Um, if you are, have the option, um, grab the picture. Um, from the site and have it available to you for reference. Um, I'm gonna have this here, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on the screen as I'm as I'm doing it because it I don't think it's gonna work out with my um, setup. I'll try, but I don't think that's gonna work. So I, it's better if you just grab the picture and just have it there as reference. But I will talk you through it and we'll go through it um, all together, anyways. Um, in terms of the paint that we're going to use, so. We have our paint lineup right here. So as per usual, we have our red, blue, yellow, black, and white. So you can mix any colors using those colors. Um, I do also have purple, green, and orange. And I did that um, just to make it a little bit easier um, and some of the consistency. So if you have pre-mixed colors, you can use that. If you want to just mix them as you go, that's up to you. So you can do it either which way. And I'll talk through both ways as we are going through. Um, yeah. Hey Alex, glad you're joining today. All right, cool. So we have so about 12 of you guys on, which is fantastic. So I'm going to pop this in my tripod, make sure that it's set up, get this angled nicely. So there we go. There is some shadow. I apologize for that. I was trying to pick like a shadier spot so that I wasn't like in super sunlight. Um, but this is kind of what we got. So unfortunately, this is what we have. So I'll try to like move the canvas a bit so we can see as we go. Um, I don't have an additional light to have a source on it, unfortunately. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Lindsay. Thanks for joining, guys. And there might be people around because the bathrooms are close, so cars do come around quite a bit. So we'll try to get that going. I don't have any music today in the background either, so you'll have to just listen to my voice and maybe some trees and branches and whatnot. All right, cool. So I'm gonna put, yeah, it's not gonna be able to go in the shot, but that's okay. I'm gonna put my painting somewhere where I can reference it, because normally I have my computer set up too. I'll try to keep um, eye on the comments as we go. Hi, Amanda. Oh, awesome. You're gonna, so Amanda says that she's gonna attempt this in watercolor today. I think that's a really good idea. If you look at the original image, you'll see like the background is, kind of washed out. So that's going to turn out, I think, really nice. Um, I know Alex likes to do watercolors too, so I'm excited to see both yours and Alex's. Um, I think, yeah, it's going to turn out really cool. This is neat. Also, it's kind of funny because this picture is, um, which I didn't realize this when I first picked it, but it's a winter painting. <laughs> so in this nice summer heat, we're going to be painting some snow, some snow on the trees, and we're going to get some coolness from this um, lovely, colorful, bright 
beautiful painting. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna set that up probably just beside me right there, refer it that way. It's kind of a weird setup. Maybe I'll move this. I'm gonna see if I can, maybe that will help with how dark it is. It's still a little shady. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Jen's joined too, fantastic. All right, so I'm just going to, oh, I got a water bottle, that works. Yay. No, it doesn't. All right, this is like MacGyver this area here. Okay, so I have my palette going. I have some paintbrushes. I'm using um, like a, a large paintbrush, a medium and a fine one. Um, my paint canvas is very small, so it's just uh, going with that. So I actually have brought four paintbrushes, but these are the main ones I'm gonna use. That's considered my large for today since I'm using a smaller canvas. Um, and then I have more of a medium, which is slightly thicker, and then I have like a thinner brush. So that's what I'm using. If you're using a larger canvas, you need to have larger paint brushes or you're gonna take a heck of a long time to do anything. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's start putting some color on our palette. So what we're gonna work on first on this painting is we're gonna work on the background. And the background, when I say that, is really just to get the color on the canvas before even putting these orange trees and everything inside, right? So we're gonna put like white and yellow in the middle, orange, purple, blue, and green, and we're gonna build that out in a nice wash. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. You need to be cautious because you don't want the dark colors to seep in, into the middle. Um, so we'll work on that together and um, go through it. But again, the great thing with acrylic is if we make a mistake, it doesn't matter because we can fix it. And that's the best part about it. So let's start, um, put some yellow on your palette. So I'm gonna start with there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my pre-mixed orange for here, because again, just for the sake of convenience on my part, but you can use red. I am gonna put some red on here too, and I might mix it a little bit to get the color I want as we go. I want, I have a pre-mixed purple, so I'm gonna use that too. All my paints are from the dollar store. Um, so sometimes the color ends up being a little bit funky and we're just gonna go with it, because why not? I don't think I've ever seen a sky with all these colors in it anyway, so you can do what you like. And then I'm just gonna put my pre-mixed green as well on here. But you can mix all these colors and get your own colors together as well. I wanna also put some white on my canvas because sometimes I want things a little bit lighter than they are. So, and that's what I'm gonna start off with. So I have a bunch of colors going a little bit on my <laughs> dirty palette. Um, and then I'm gonna get my, my the biggest brush and we're gonna start off. So let's start off by getting our yellow, okay? And we're only gonna have to do our sky um, like two thirds of the way. The one third at the bottom is gonna be snow, but you wanna bring it down lower than what you think that ground's gonna be. So just keep that in mind when we're doing it. So let's put in yellow right down the center of our canvas. Okay, and I'm just putting it pure on. I'm not um, diluting it. I'm not wetting my canvas first. I'm just sticking yellow right down the middle and I'm going just in a horizontal fashion just okay it's okay if it gets paint everywhere that's fine okay so there we go I think we're good okay awesome okay then I'm gonna get a little bit of orange and the way I'm going to start putting the orange on here, if you're doing red, you're gonna dab it the same way, only very little bit of it. I'm just gonna like do these dabs like this along down. And then I'm gonna just smush them in very tightly. So I'm not going into the yellow too much just to get the paint um, on the canvas and to cover the canvas in this way. And then I'm gonna, once it you have pretty much like a dry brush at that point, you're just gonna start blending it into the yellow slightly. And I loosen like how hard I'm pressing on it just so that it starts blending into it. You can even go up and down a little bit just to make it soft. And then so you have a more of a softer blend into it that way. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, and you have even a nice shadow to look at. I don't know, it's still, still pretty shadowy. I apologize. That's gonna be a little bit crazy. But we'll work with what we got. All right, and the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go dab, 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 dab with my orange. I still want some orange paint on there so it covers. And then I'm gonna smush it, but don't go into the yellow too much on this first round. 
I might need some more orange paint and that's cool. But again, I just want to make sure there's a nice column of orange happening. And then as the paint gets covered and you're going to bring it slowly into the yellow. And like for this one right now, I'm feeling that if I smush it too much, the orange is going to overtake the, the yellow. So I'm going to put yellow back on my brush and then I'm going to soften it a little bit. The thing is you start blending it and I don't want to lose that yellow color. You know what? Okay. So at this point, I think the way this is working here, the yellow behind here has already dried a bit and I don't, and that's the thing about working outdoors. If you're also outside, your paint's gonna dry a heck of a lot faster than working inside. So that created a really straight line right here and I don't like that. So I'm gonna wait until that orange dries a bit and then I'm gonna smush yellow back into it. Cause if I do that now, it's just gonna blend into the orange and that's not gonna be the color I want. Okay, I want it to have this smoothness here and this smoothness happened cause that yellow was still wet. So that's the difference between it. So I'm just gonna wait <laughs> like not long at all cause it's already almost dry out here. Holy baloney. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be kind of an annoying painting to do today, I think, being outside. <laughs> Drying super fast. Okay, I'm just going on the other side. I'm putting orange back on to try to like wet this a little bit before I get the next color on. Because I want to mix the purple into it, but I don't want it to dry and look weird. So the same thing with purple. I'm gonna go all the way down. Okay, and then I'm just gonna mix. My premix purple is kind of strange. It's it's not very opaque. So, and then I'm, I might just use my paper towel and just get some of the paint off my brush actually. Okay. And the thing about this background, a few things. Don't stress too much about how it's blending fully or looking because when we start putting everything else on, it will cover it up. So I know it's kind of annoying, but when we start putting some more stuff, it will blend nicer into it. This is very touchy. Very touchy. Okay. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna add for me, I don't know about you guys, how it is your climate where you're at. Add a little bit of water but I don't think that actually worked to my benefit so I would not suggest adding water don't add water to it to mix it because it kind of just smeared everything and that's not fun okay so we're just going to stick with making more columns of the color okay. and instead of going back and forth on each side I think I'm going to try to finish one side and then we'll go back and finish that that side after um so I'm doing it a little differently than what I did the first one okay so I'm just going to get blue Bring that down beside the purple I just did. Okay. I'm just gonna smush it in a bit. And again, you're gonna have a lot of trees covering this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna give that feeling that it's blending slightly, and then we're gonna get green. And in between this, I'm not cleaning my brush off. I'm just continuing this process and this line down. When you're doing this and it's pretty um, like straight because it's not blending, try and just vary up your lines and make them go like some of them smaller and some of them a little bit further in so it just looks a little bit more natural. And don't forget to paint the sides of your canvas, especially if you're planning to hang this. The sides and the top should be painted. Okay, awesome, good. So I'll make sure there's no comments. If, <laughs> if you guys have any comments, let me know and I'll respond to them. I just wanna make sure I'm keeping an eye on the section so I don't ignore you guys. Sometimes I get into it and then I forget to look. <laughs> okay, that works. We'll keep it like that. It's a little weirdly blended there, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go on this side. This is fully dried for me. Hopefully yours is a little bit more wet than mine is. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and put yellow and kind of build it back out that way because mine's fully dried on that side. Um, if, you, if your paint's already wet, you can, you don't have to, you can skip that part. Okay, so I'm gonna just go back down and put yellow down the center again. So that orange went a little far. So 
for me. Oh, there's a bug climbing. Oh, you're gonna call my painting now? No, you're not. No, you're not. No. I don't need that kind of texture on my painting. Tell your friends, do not come and bother me. Okay. All right, let's get the orange again. Let's bring that down. Uh-oh. Another bug came on my arm. He told his friend. <laughs> That's not what I meant him to tell him. <laughs> I don't want you to come bother me. I want you to leave me alone. Okay, cool. Wow, it's drying so fast outside. Not something I expected to happen. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put some purple. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Trying to work a little bit faster than I normally do, which I know I work pretty quick, I think, a lot of times. But um, the outdoors is against me today, so. Bring that purple all the way, all the way, all the way. And try just to vary the smear so it's not super similar the whole time. That one's annoying. Yep, I just used my finger to try to erase it. That's what I just did. That's funny. It worked kind of. Oh, that bug's back. He really wants to be an artist today. He's like, my dream of an artist. No, sorry, I talk for bugs sometimes. Okay, back to being serious. Okay. So I'm just putting in that blue. Holy baloney, he's like on my canvas. This guy, this guy, really? <sighs> go away, you don't wanna be here. Go, go, go on that painting, it's done. Okay. And then I'm just gonna continue the same process and get a nice green column all the way, all the way down. I'm trying to vary off the streaks. I find, I'm finding this side, it's not cooperating as nicely as that side was. And you might be finding that too. I, it tends to happen, but that's okay. It's okay if you have this because again, we're gonna be adding some layers of the trees and stuff. And this is more just to give it some more depth. Um, so just has our first layer. Cause even, I don't know if you can see from your angle, probably not so much. Let me see. I wonder if there's a way if I can zoom it in. No. Oh yeah, I did. What? Guys, I just learned how to zoom in. All right, neat. All right, that's a little better. Um, okay, so on this side here, it's really light paint, so I can see my canvas very much through it. Um, so you can kind of add a little bit more paint in those areas if you want to, or when we add our background, then that will help quite a bit as well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more green paint because it's pretty see-through, and I don't like that. I want it to be more opaque. I want to do the same thing on this side too, actually. So I'm just gonna bring it down and then just drag it out a little. Little hints of green. All right, so I think we are good with that for now. Awesome, okay, cool. So while, <laughs> I was gonna say while well, that dries, but mine's pretty dry. But I'm still gonna try and do the same order that I did the first painting because I was in my house doing the first painting. Um, so, and you guys are probably, I'm, I'm assuming, not outdoors. Um, so we're gonna just stick with that flow of it. So the bottom here, so we're gonna jump now down to the bottom to get the snow. Now the snow's pretty cool. The snow is nice and um, it's all white. We're going to start off with a wash. We're going to put some water on the canvas. We're going to put white paint and then we're just going to touch um, the different colors. So we have some yellow coming down the middle and then we have some like little glimpses of purple and blues and some other nice colors, but it's all very light. Um, so for those doing watercolor, I think that's going to look really cool. Uh, for acrylic, we can achieve a really cool effect this way as well. 
Um, if your paint water is really dirty, um, you may want to get clean water to do this part, but at the same time, you're gonna be putting more colors on it, so it's not like the end of the world if it's not like super white, because it's not gonna end up being white. So I'm just gonna get water on the bottom of my canvas. all the way, all the way on both sides. Now that I have water on my canvas, I'm bringing it up into my um, line. My line isn't super straight anyways, and we're gonna be putting more stuff there, but I want the snow to kind of come up into that so it's in the foreground. And now I'm gonna add, get a big chunk of white paint and I'm just gonna start putting it on. And there's quite a bit of water on there already. Then I'm just gonna get this and then on this too, like where that horizon line meets, so where it meets the background, um, it's not perfect and there's like piles of snow. So feel free to just kind of like make little piles of snow. paint the bottom of your canvas too. It's white, so it's not going to be as crazy. Alright, there we go. And I'm putting it right back down, but that's fine. Okay, so now with my brush, it still um, has white paint on it. I'm going to touch my yellow. And the yellow is the easiest one kind of because it's, it's still very light. I'm just going to have a little bit on the corner. And then I'm just going to just touch this right down the middle where the yellow like to reflect the sky into the snow okay and you're barely gonna notice it like it's it's gonna be so subtle you just want to blend it out a bit you don't want it to become fully yellow like someone peed all over the snow you just want it to have the the hint of it oh yeah let's just throw my brush around I do that I think like once a session throw my brush into the paint for some reason not on purpose <laughs> And on this painting as well, there's a little bit of yellow that's, a, that's kind of touching on this side a bit and it kind of veers out towards the side of the canvas. And there's a little bit of yellow, just a touch on this side. Ooh, it's getting windier, it's cooler. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch the snow a bit with that. Okay, now the other thing you'll see here too, there's a little bit of orange as well. So I'm just gonna touch it slightly and I'm just gonna bring a little bit Kind of again to reflect where the orange is and just blend it in slightly so i'm just touching the corner of my brush into the orange it's very very minimal like so minimal okay and then i'm just going to touch i'm kind of kind of just reflect it on both sides just put a little bit of it and right now the canvas is still wet so as i'm touching it it's literally just like bleeding into the water paint water acrylic paint that i put on there okay we're going to do the same thing with the purple so a little touch we're just gonna touch it a little bit. Just touch it a little bit. Like that. And there's some on this side too. Okay. And I'm just putting it where, more or less where it is in the sky so it touches the bottom there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue, exactly the same. Again, I'm working a little quick because mine's already starting to dry. So, and I wanna get it on here before it dries fully or else the effect won't be the same. And I do want a little bit of blue coming in this way just for funsies. Okay. And I feel like this is a weird like, thing to hold my canvas. So it's, oh, so it's a little bit too dark because it's already dry. Once it dries, it will like stand out more, and I don't want it to stand out more. And I'm, I feel like it dried really quickly. I just wet my brush slightly with the water, but I don't want to put too much water because I also don't want it all to like blend all together. That's not what I want. I just want it to touch. Okay. So. 
that's kind of what I have going on. Uh, oh, it's so hard for you to see it, I think. Uh, it's like dirt or something. Maybe another bug or two. It's so hard to see it. Okay, there we go. So on my, this one when I did at home where it wasn't drying so fast, I was able to get a bit more streakiness happening with the water. So hopefully you're able to get a little bit more because you're not dealing with paint drying so freaking fast. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. So that's going to dry in probably a second or two for me. <laughs> But that's cool. So what we're going to do is now this back is all dry. That should be pretty dry for you as well. If you want at this point, if you wanted to, um, again, like this is still very, um, it's not very opaque and I want to, I want it to be a bit darker green. So I'm just going to put a little bit more green on the sides. I don't want to see the white canvas peek through before I start building in some of the trees that are happening in this picture. Again, I'm just doing this to give me a base so that when we put everything on top of it, I don't have to worry so much about um, the canvas peeking through too much in the background. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay, I'm going to switch brushes now. I'm going to go to uh, my, I think my medium one I'm going to go with. You want to go with your medium or your fine one. Um, maybe I'll start with my fine one, actually. Yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna go with my fine one first. And then um, this is where I'm gonna start putting in the orange. Um, so then the background, there's like the trees in the background which, you, which look orangey. So you're gonna use the orange and we're gonna draw some like nice ideas of where those trunks live in that forest. And then I'll probably either use this brush or I might switch to my medium one to put in some of the leaves. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to wet paintbrush a bit with water and just get a better tip because my paintbrush even though my thin one is still um, not super super thin uh, so I'm just gonna get my orange paint I kind of want it to be slightly darker so I'm just gonna put a little bit of red in my orange paint because I want it to be a little darker than um, what I have on here so if you're mixing your own colors I would just get a, a slightly darker than whatever you use on your background so it will come out a little bit okay if you have brown too you can mix it with brown and that would look okay. okay okay so that's kind of what I got right there all right so now um, so this is gonna kind of frame and it's gonna be in the background you're gonna have it good dip down lower and then we're gonna put purple stuff on top of the bottom part anyways so we're good so we're just gonna have Let's say like one, let's just start it. One's gonna go there. Oh, sorry, I don't like the way that turned out. So when you're painting and you want the line to be super smooth, you wanna put some water in it so it doesn't become what I did. I mean, you can't really tell, it kinda looks okay <laughs> in there, but it's not. It's not super um, solid and I don't like that. So I'm just going to go over with paint is a little smoother and I'm just going to thicken it up slightly. Still a little thicker than I would have wanted it to be, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Okay. So just make sure there's some water mixed into the acrylic paint. And when I'm putting my paintbrush in it, I'm like rotating it, like rolling it into it. Okay. And then there's some more that maybe are kind of coming this way. Okay. Another one's coming here. Maybe it's coming out. You can kind of make these any which way you want to. Um, they're all like branches and trunks and stuff. So again, um, you don't have to make them super straight either. So I think like with this one, I kind of want to make it a little bit more curvy, kind of coming down a bit. Okay, that one's gonna come down too. Another one that's a bit higher. And they're gonna kind of, they're gonna go they're not gonna touch the middle middle part of where the yellow is they're gonna stay in the orange zone and into the purple that's where you want these to live okay. my paint is drying so fast I find so that's pretty 
pretty tricky. Okay, so just put in, and then some of the branches are higher, so I'm going to put one up here. Okay. And the thing is, we're going to put a bunch of, like, um, leaves and stuff on the tree. So you don't need to make them, you can make them very much, like, all connect and, and make a lot of sense, or, or not, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So when we put those other things in here, it's going to fill it out nicely. We just want to be able to see some of them pop out. Okay, I'm just going to add another one there. Maybe we have another one here. All right, and these are on the background, so we're still going to have our um, darker black trees are going to come in the foreground. That's going to look really cool. Maybe I'm just going to have this coming out too. I might paint over that, but just to give me a bit of a guide. Okay, and then I want something back here. Just kind of put some branches. I'm actually feeling a bit more inspired, I guess, being outdoors. I want to put more trees in here. Okay, so there we go. Cool. So, hey Steven. Hi Scott. Thanks for jumping in. I'm checking it out. So Scott's one of my friends from a long time and he is a new dad, which is very exciting. Only I can't see his baby yet because of the stupid virus. But he looks pretty darn swishable. So I hope you're doing good. I hope you and Nicole are doing awesomely. Cool. So now that I've put in um, those, I'm going to go in with um, my orange. I'm going to start putting in um, the background of all the leaves of the trees. So a few things to keep in mind here. You want to make them sparse in some areas. Right? So you want it still to come into the yellow um, and you want to, you don't want it just to be like a big blump of like background. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect either because again, it's just the idea that there are like leaves and stuff in the background. Okay. So we're going to play with that a bit. Whoa. Painting's going to fall because nothing's holding up properly. All right. So I'm getting my medium brush and I'm going to get, um, I'm going to use that same kind of color I mix that like ready dark orange color. I might change it up a bit, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to get my medium brush and it has some thing going on there. And then let's just start putting in some of these leaves. So I'm just going to frame this, right? So let's start. I think I want to do this tree here. So I'm just going to like, and some of them are going to come in. Okay. And then when you first start, you're going to have a lot more paint on your brush. So start kind of wherever you want it to be denser, and then as you, the paint, um, as there's less paint on your brush, because you're painting, uh, move into the areas that you don't want as much, as many, as dense leaves. Okay, and we're gonna get right in here. We're gonna just give this some leaves too. Oh my God, that bug is back. Hilarious. He's my new friend. Maybe that's it. He's like, there's been no people in the park. I'm lonely. And now you're here painting. Yep, I have a bug voice now apparently. Okay, I have to stop. Um, okay. Okay, so I want these again. So I kind of want to follow where the branches are a bit, but I want it to be sparse, but I still want some happening in here. Okay, and again, it's nature, so they don't have to be perfect. They can kind of just have their own, like, groove. On, so that's cool. Okay, there we go. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I'm digging that. Okay, let's go on this side now. Okay, so again, it's going to be a bit more dense, and then as it comes in, depending on your brush too. So my brush is kind of making like similar splotchy patterns. So just make, try to like roll your brush a bit in your while you're going, so it's not like super. Like you have like a stamp and you're just like stamping tree branches everywhere. You want it to look a bit natural. Just like move the brush around a bit. So as you're doing this too, you'll see that any of the background you're kind of like, ugh, it didn't look that great. You can kind of cover up the leaves, which is nice. 
We still want it to show through, so don't cover everything up. Okay. So you'll see I'm just like dabbing as I'm going. Okay. That bug's kind of bugging me though. He's he's gonna go my painting. Check it out. Look, he's on my painting. Seriously. Seriously. Okay, fine. Stay, but I don't think you're gonna like this acrylic paint. Yeah. Go away. Thank you. Maybe that's it. He just needed to see what was happening. Alright. Special guest by Random Bug. Okay, I'm just getting the top too, just to keep it consistent with my branches. Alright, there we go. So that, there, I think I'm happy with that background. I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna do it with purple. And we're gonna do the purple areas. But with this, you don't need to worry about putting in any of those lines in because it's too far back, we can't even tell anyways. So that's super cool. So let's just do that. So I'm gonna grab purple. I don't even think I'm cleaning my brush. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it purple. And we're gonna do the same thing. So now we're just gonna Say there's some purple coming in this way. And there's a, something else. Maybe there's a lot happening here. And it's okay if it has some orange on your brush because it works because it's going into the orange. So that works out nicely. So we're just gonna do the same thing and just like dab your purple brush along the top, like the half, maybe a third portion of it. As if there's some like tree things going on. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay. Okay, so let's just dab that in there. Get that purple going. Okay, there we go. Okay, that one I brought a little bit further down. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I don't really want it to go super far down. It depends on, on what technique you want, how you want this to look. If you want a bit more of a gap between things or not, I'm okay with it having just that blur. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with blue, so we're just gonna keep doing the same process. Okay, so let's just bring blue and do dab, dab, dab again. In this corner, there's gonna be a lot of black, so we don't need to worry too much. But I do wanna get some of these lines happening and being more natural, like tree-ish kind of things going on. Okay, and the same thing on this side. Dab it, dab it, dab it. Just have some fun with it. Now back and forth, because it's fun to go back and forth. I still have orange on my brush, but that's cool. It's popping out nicely. Okay, let's grab the green. Guess what we're gonna do? The same thing. Okay, so let's just dab. We can kind of go in. Kind of blur that line that we created before. Right, because again, that background is really there just to give us a nice base. So we don't have to stress too much about things blending super well or not. Okay, there we go. So now we have the feeling that there's like these treats that are happening. And it's gonna look even better once we put everything else on top of it. Before we do any more of that though, we still have to build in some of the shrubbery that's in the foreground and that is done in like a purple color. So we're gonna do purple and I, I put a bit of white just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna do like kind of a light purple. Again, be cautious just the way you are with black, be careful of white. Um, with certain colors like purple, it can really brighten it up super fast. So go slow when, you, when you're adding 
um, the hues to your colors. Do a little bit at a time. Even if you really want to just go crazy and get it done, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to just start with the purple. I'm going to put a little bit of white into it just to make it slightly lighter. Alternately, you can always start with darker on your canvas and then add a little bit of white and like blend right on your canvas. That's a cool technique too. Okay, so we're going to just start off and similar to what we just did with the trees, I'm just going to do like little like smushes with my brush. Okay. I'm just going to build some bushes in here. I'm going to try to stay true to where that line is that we made with the snow, but we can always play with that and fix that or change it as we want as it goes. So the deer is going to be in this middle zone. So I don't need to worry too much about going all the way across unless you want to change positioning of your deer. If you want to change position, that bugs totally back. Just so you know, it's, it's on my palette. I know you guys are really invested in like what's happening with the bug right now. So I will make sure to give you updates consistently. Okay. Um, so just going to keep going with this. And the cool thing is so now I will actually get a little bit of white and I am just gonna like touch it a bit just to give it a little bit of variation. Again, it's it's winter in this painting too. So having a little bit of lightness in here could reflect some of the, the snow stuff that's happening. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, let's go on the other side. Let's build some little mountains. No, not mountains, little hills are not mountains. Little shrubberies. Okay. Hey everyone. Hey. Hey Dara. Yeah, sounds good. No problem. Hey Helen. Don't worry. It's okay. Don't worry. This uh, session you'll still be able to view it afterwards. So I, once it, even though it's alive, like you'll still be able to see it. So if you just want to start a little bit later, you can. I don't know if you can actually like go back and watch it like in the moment. I think you have to wait until it's done and, and put up and then you can then um, rewind and start from the beginning. So unfortunately, you might have to wait till it's over if you wanted to start right from the beginning. There's some cool techniques, so I would suggest that, um, you know. It's hard to just talk through it at this point, I think. Okay, cool. But it will be available, so you guys can do it at any other point in the future. It's all good. And I, I don't know if you guys have seen already, but I we also have the I put up the um, pre-recorded one for Happy Camper, no Bright Camper. So that one is also available to you, and that one's a pre-recorded video. So that one is available right now that you can go on and you can watch and you can rewind and start wherever you want and go from there. That one was a really fun one. I'm just going back and forth and just adding like some darker, some lighter, just until I get it like how I want it to look. Again, this is all background, so it doesn't have to have a lot of detail, but it can, if you wanted to. Again, doesn't matter, you can make it your world. I'm having fun with it, so <laughs> as I'm going, I'm just like, la la la, dab, dab, dab. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, Got some shrubberies going. This painting really makes me feel like a Bob Ross. Like I'm not nearly his caliber, but this is how it feels. Like it feels like you're just like smushing stuff together and then like, oh, now there's bushes. Oh, now there's trees. <laughs> like you're like, oh, what? How did the snow appear? Like it was just water and random colors. So I think it's, it's really cool, I think, um, because it's really fun and very quickly you have something that looks, um, I don't know, like really like, nice and lots of depth into it and really hard when it's not that hard to do um cool okay so i think it's it's good so far um i do find that um i do like even in the painting that i did before i added a little bit of white um paint like light white down the middle just to brighten the center core up um and i think i'm going to do that again here because it is it's nice but i feel like i want it just a touch brighter and the white will accomplish that. Um, but again, it's already so dry. So I'm, I'm gonna try it out 
you might just hold off let me try it and then I'll talk through it but I'm just gonna try to like pop white down the middle kind of sporadically and then I'm gonna get yellow and then I'm just gonna like blend it in a bit into the yellow but still try to keep some of that core of that white going just to brighten it slightly because I feel like it needs a little bit of a pop This brush is such a weird brush. This is not my usual medium brush. I usually use like a different one. I also try to pick brushes that were like shorter handles so I could like pack them easier. <laughs> so I'm a little off on my tools that I'm using. But it's working out alright. So yeah, so I just added, so, I, so as you saw, like I put pure white and I smushed it down the middle. Then I got yellow and then I just like smushed it around and I, I am liking that. I think I want it a little brighter. I think I smushed it a little too much. Too much smushing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I got kind of orangey in this. It's okay. You know the deer is going to be here anyway, so I got to keep that in mind. Not to worry too much about that. gonna bring that yellow into the sides a bit okay cool yeah so I, I do like that I think that is working and it does just make it a pop brighter okay so I don't know if you can see that again the lighting is odd outdoors but there we go yeah you can see that cool okay awesome yeah 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 what are we gonna do next we are going to, I think I want to make the snow in the background a little bit, I want to make this line a little bit um, like straighter, like put some snow here. I don't know if I want to do that right now or if I want to do it later. No, I do want to straighten up a little bit. Okay, yeah. So back to my medium brush, I'm gonna get white paint. I'm gonna get some water in there because I don't want it to be super crazy white. Like super opaque, I want it to be a little bit lighter. Okay, and I'm just gonna go in and re-put in some of those like piles that I had before because I kind of ruined some of those lines when I was smushing in some of that shrubberies. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna make like little kind of just make it a little bit more erratic and just have like piles of snow and clean up my line essentially kind of this brush is not super friendly in letting me do that well it's not horrible but okay cool so you can make some piles bigger than others just give it like an edge no big deal just painting snow in summer I do want it to be a little darker. Just put a little bit more paint on that. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna do it, just leave it like that. That works out. Hi, Annette. Hope we're doing well. Did you guys do the camper painting? I'm wondering if you and I know you said like you had um, some young ones joining you to the camper one. So I hope you guys had a good time with it. If you got a chance to do it yet. I might want to, I don't know, maybe we'll leave it like that and put the trees in and we'll touch it up afterwards. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Talking out loud. Talk, figure things out. Okay. So now we're ready to put in the trees. The nice black, beautiful 
boom trees that when you put these in it's gonna make everything come together so nice I'm gonna get my black paint going I didn't put this on the canvas yet or the palette yet because um, my paint is dry already quickly and then I, I'm glad because being outdoors it's even worse okay I'm gonna use my thin brush get some water I want to just water that down a bit so that it's like super smooth like ink Ooh, I think I just got bit. Maybe it was that bug. Okay, cool. All right, got it on? Okay, so let's just do it. So this frames your picture. So when you look at the original one here, right? So it like literally gives you like a nice, beautiful crescent frame. So we're gonna do the same kind of dealio. Okay, so I got my brush. Okay, and we're just gonna decide where it's gonna start. It's gonna go and it's gonna go right on the top. So just start wherever you feel comfortable and just do it. Put that line down. Oh yeah, it's still wet. Ay ay. Okay, and that goes right in front. It's thicker a little bit at the bottom. Okay, and this one, I want it to be a little thicker than that. Okay. And this one I want it to come all the way off my canvas, like so. Okay. We're gonna do this. this one has another branch that comes out the other way. I want it to be a bit more like rickety. I don't want it to be so straight and perfect. So then I want this trunk to be a little thicker and not super straight. I want it to have more of that tree feel, like bark. I want it to be a bit more bumpy-ish. There we go. Okay. That's the first one. Okay. Let's put one on the other side just for fun. Okay. Right off the canvas at the top. I'm starting in the thinner areas because I'm feeling like I have more control over my paintbrush. And then at the start and then it gets kind of thicker at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing that would be the case for you it might be opposite it's totally fine this branch goes like this way and it goes like into the trees so and this V so the V's on these trees are pretty low and you'll see there's like some snow in between them and the trunks are they do get thicker at the bottom okay I am just gonna give it a nice little base some snow will probably cover that up a little bit. Okay. And you can make these more complex. You can put more branches on them if you want. I'm going to stick pretty simply with it, but you can feel free to change it up however you want to. I'm just going to try to get some nice trees going on here. This one's going to be pretty straight. It's a little curvy, but that's cool. And then I'm just going to thicken him up. Do a bit more of a trunk. Like so. So we're gonna do we're gonna make a nice big big tree this one's gonna come it's gonna cross this one a little bit oh my line is like not very smooth but I'm just gonna keep going with it okay gonna get that going okay and then I want this one to come out careful when you're putting your hand on your canvas like I said my back is pretty the background is pretty dry but if you're in a different environment it might not have dried already and then you'll just be smearing it with your hand the whole way down and that's not fun Get that trunk in. 
I just want to thicken up this base here and bring it up. So as it gets higher up, it gets thinner. But closer to the main trunk, it's thicker. Okay, so that one's a bit of a thicker V. Okay. Awesome. Okay, we have some more trees here too. This one's gonna go crisscrossy a little bit here too. Again, try not to make it like, mine still tend to be pretty straight, but make them a little knobby, make them a little wonky. That would look good. And make sure they're not super thin. You still want it to be thick enough because when we put our shadows in, we want the shower, shadows, <laughs> showers, <laughs> the shadows to have a nice weight to them as well. Okay. And one more right along here. Almost along the side. Ah. I guess that's how thick it's going to be. Okay, there we go. I need to get some more water on there. I do want, oh my gosh, yeah, hi bug, how's it going? I'm just going to touch at the top so the branches kind of continue off the canvas because I'm weird and I like that. It's weird because I'm still going to put a whole bunch of like leaves and stuff, but, and I'm just going to touch the bottom. I want to make them a little bit more straight. It's kind of snow anyway, so it doesn't have to be super straight. I just want to do that. Okay, let's make them on the other side too. I'm gonna go from there. Okay. This other one's gonna come up here. Thicken it up a little bit as it goes up. It's going there. Oh, this got to be a bit thicker then. Okay. So keep going and put these branches in. And I'm keeping this pretty straight so you can see as I'm going, but. Feel free to like rotate the canvas however it makes sense for you to do so. Don't just keep it in one spot as you're painting. Make sure you're moving it. This is a bigger tree apparently. Okay. Awesome. Okay, that was a very thick one. That one looks good. Okay, 
And then we want to put another tree kind of coming up here. And maybe it's going to be a... Okay. Kind of a funky tree. A little knobby. I'm going to go off there. I don't really like that too much. Make it a bit thicker on this side and a bit more on this side. And there. Okay. And I want to put one more down the middle there to kind of make it match the original. I feel like they're getting thicker on this side just because of my angle. wasn't going to be big, but now it is. Anyway, cool. So there we go. Some of them go all the way up to the top, some of them don't, and that's cool. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over to my medium brush again. And we're going to put in, we're going to smush in those leaves. So the same thing that we saw over here. So we have the black. We're gonna do the same thing with the black on these trees. Okay, so a medium brush, get black on it. Start in the more dense areas when you have a lot of paint on your brush and move into the areas that aren't as dense. Okay, make sure, I think I think we're okay like, oh, that kind of like that is good, okay. So I'm just gonna smush it, get the top of the canvas. And when you're doing this, um, you can keep it pretty dense in some spots, but try to have some of the background still peek through, because that's going to give it some really nice depth. And again, vary your brush to make sure that you're not just... Um, keeping the same pattern. Like mine kind of makes a similar pattern if I keep it in the same angle, so just move it around a bit. You know, maybe the medium brush is good for you to do this, maybe your thinner brush is better, so just use what you think works best and you have the more control over. And you want these to come down about like a third-ish of the way. You don't want it to go much lower because you still want the trees to have the branches kind of living and breathing on their own. Some of this is going to come down a little further in right here. This one's going to have another one in here a little bit. A little spider. We got a little spider happening. This one's going to come off a little bit. Yeah, I like that. A little bit more sparse where there's brightness. Okay. I like that. Okay, let's do the other side as well. So I'm going to start in this denser area. I'm going to get the sides. I'm just going to pull it out into the lighter colors. I'm just going to smush it around. Okay. Just follow the way the Whatever works for you, like you just do it however makes you happy. I'm kind of bringing some of the branches, like swooping them down, I guess. Like this. I do want it to still be pretty opaque in, in some areas. Oh, there's a spider. There you go. Just got some visitors and oh, don't jump on me. I don't want you on me. That's not cool. I'm just gonna come up with some sparseness here. Okay, there we go. I want it a little 
sensor up there. And then a little bit more in there. Okay. And just take a step back. Go away. I'm just going to get the top and a bit the side so it kind of gets the same effect. And, and the other channel I didn't have any here, but I'm going to put a little bit in here because I want to. Not a, as much, but still some. There we go. I like that. Okay, cool. So there we go. So there's our beautiful trees. There we go. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hermie. Glad you guys stopped in. Poked around a bit. All right, so. Cool. Awesome, awesome. So we got that going, which is nice. Okay, so let's put in, um, hmm. we're on black right now. We wanna jump in and do the deer right away. I'm not too sure about that. I don't think I want to yet. No, I don't want to. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over to my thinner brush and I'm going to put in the shadows for the trees. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm just cleaning off. I'm making sure I'm cleaning off my brushes if I'm not going to use them in a while. So this medium brush I'm not going to use for a little bit. So I just want to make sure that all the acrylic paint won't dry on it. So for these shadows, a few things to note. Um, so the color is really just like a gray. So it's just like a gray that we're gonna mix with the black and the white. And the trees that are closest to the light source are kind of more straight down. They're still on a slight angle away from the light source, but just slightly. And as it goes further away, the angle goes further out. Oh man, I don't know if you can see, okay, good, you can't see my foot because it's pretty dirty. <laughs> Anyways, and then it kind of goes further and further out and it angles outward. So it starts kind of thinner and then it kind of, not thinner, like closer to the light source and it just kind of starts going out, further out. So that's how we're going to do it as we're painting this, okay? Oh my. All right, so again, remember black and white are very powerful. Black is very powerful into the white, so I'm just going to get a little, little bit of black and I'm going to throw it into my white. I need it to be very fluid, so I'm going to put water in here to just get a gray going. I don't want it like super dark. I don't want it super light. I want it kind of in the middle, like a nice medium gray. Okay. Um, it's also gonna, like the way it looks, it's gonna dry darker than the way it looks. So if anything, like opt for it to be a bit lighter, um, cause it will dry darker. Okay, I'm just making sure there's enough water in there so it's smooth when I put it on. Okay, so I'm just rolling my thin brush into it until I feel like it's a nice coverage on there. Okay, so let's get started. Pal, this thing is kind of weird. Okay, maybe if I do that, that works. Okay, so we're basically just going to start where the tree is. Okay, and we're just going to bring it outwards. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing I need a bit more water. It's not um, soft enough for me to paint it out. Okay, and I'm gonna keep it kind of similar in thickness to that shrunk. It's gonna come all the way down. Again, if it can vary slightly from the, you can try to make it match very similarly, but it doesn't have to. Okay, so there's the first one. Holy, I think my bug spray is wearing off. And more that are coming around. All right. Okay, so let's do this one again. This one again is going to be very pretty straight, but just slightly away, kind of following the same as the last one we just did. Okay, I just need some water. continue on. This next one I'm going to do, this one's going to veer off more. Okay. So this one is going to angle quite significantly. It's still going to be a similar thickness, but it's going to angle 
more to the side. And this one actually has a slight, has that other one, like the other branch. So we're just gonna do that too. There we go. So the ones that have two branches um, close, like closer to the bottom, you can make two branches. Otherwise, if it's farther up, don't do it because it'll be too far. Okay, this one again is also gonna veer off to the side. On an angle here. And this one is going to veer off. You can't really even see this shadow to be honest, but it's still there. We're still gonna have it. It doesn't make sense not to. I'm just going to touch the side of my canvas. Put the shadow there as well. Because I'm crazy and I need him to continue off my canvas. Okay. I'll also do it on the bottom too, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, I'm just going against what I just said, but that's fine. Okay, let's go on the other side and do the trees on that side. Oh, there's some like stuff going on there. Awesome. So now, let's get these ones. So again, these ones stay pretty darn straight. Okay, so let's get these ones going. It's still slightly veering off. And this one's a double one too, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of double. Awesome. Okay, similarly, this one's gonna, we're gonna have this one come down. Just like a slight veering away from the center. Slight angle. Okay, okay. Now this third tree, we're gonna make this guy have more of an angle away. So again, we're going to start, yeah, and then we're going to make this one come off more this way. Okay. Okay. The next guy I have here is nice and fat tree, an older tree. That one's going to be off even more, but I want it to be thicker. Okay. I feel like it needs to be a little thicker, to be honest. This shadow. There we go. That's better. Okay. And this one's going to be almost like right off the edge. Boomba bimba. There we go. That one has a break in it too, but you know what? I'm not going to bother putting that one in because I don't want to. I'm just gonna touch it a little bit. Make sure they're nice and solid shadows. There we go. So again, similar to when we did the black on that background, it really made a pop. When you put that shadow on, it really makes a pop. So it's super fun to do. I really like doing those parts. That's like my favorite parts. It's like scary, but very um, like worthwhile. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Where are we at? 311, not bad. Okay, so it's been just over an hour. That's fantastic. Okay, great. And we have to just do the deer, the birds, and some snow, and we're good to go. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I think what I wanna do now, huh, I'm gonna make you guys wait for the deer, but only because I'm scared to do it, and that's why I'm waiting till later to do it. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use my thin brush and we're gonna put in the snow. So we're gonna put our little bunches of snow. So my thin brush, okay, I'm gonna just bunch up a bunch of white on there and I'm gonna make little snow piles, okay? This one's gonna be like right up against this tree here. Okay, we got some more in here. Big pile, okay. I don't want it to look like the bushes. I want them to be more solid, but I still want them to have kind of like this piled up texture effect. I don't want them to be super uniform either. So some trees are gonna have some more than others and some aren't gonna have any. Okay, so I want it. So similar like when we did, um, I want the whole like line to have a little bit of texture in it actually. 
So when we did, remember when we did um, the calm waterfall um, picture a while ago? So when we did the waves in there, it's the same kind of technique for the snow. So we're just gonna get like a bunch of paint on our brush, make sure it's very opaque, and then we're just gonna like dab it and not really care how it lands. Okay, there we go. Okay, this one's gonna have some snow that's climbed up a little bit because it's a big old tree here. <laughs> so I'm gonna see the bottom of it nicely. But there we go. Okay, cool. Okay, and then I also want to um, have some of the snow on the actual trunk a bit. Sometimes it like gets in the grooves of the trees. I just want to put a little bit on some of these. Oof. So you want you don't want to water down that paint too much or else it's not going to look right. You need it to still be pretty opaque. Okay. And you can just kind of like touch it on a little bit. Okay. And it can be like in different kind of ways here. Okay. And it lives also like kind of smushed in the grooves here of this of the tree too. Right? it up a little bit and there's some in here too okay a little bit on this one here okay there's some on this one here some up here oh watch out when things are wet it gets on your hand Yes, I usually say that when I touch wet paint on my canvas <laughs> to remind you guys not to do it. Okay, there you go. So some of it has some, some of it doesn't. Different spots. All right, cool. So there we go. So I have put some snow. So now the background is, is nicely done. So I think it looks really good. Okay, so now are you guys ready? We're gonna try to put this deer in. All right, so again, strongly suggest that you guys have the picture, the original image with you so you can follow along um, and try to mimic the image as closely as possible. Alternately, something else that you can do whenever you're putting an image on your canvas and you're kind of scared about it, there's two things. One thing you can do is um, you can find an image online and literally print it and cut it out, like size it, size it and like use it as like a stencil. That could always work. Number two, um, if you're, Art, well, I think most of you guys are a little artsy, um, so that works out nicely. Um, you can always like sketch it on a piece of paper in advance, like just draw it out kind of the size you would want, and then you could do it that way too. So those are two different options that you could potentially um, do if you wanted to try to get it as perfect as possible. Um, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna see what happens. I might get a really fat deer. It might not look like a deer at all. We'll find out. Um, so we can you can join me and we can try our best. Whenever we're doing that, um, I want to start smaller than bigger so we can add girth to it. If you start really um, big and it's too big and it doesn't make sense, it's going to be really hard to fix. Um, you can still do it, it's just annoying. Um, so I would suggest starting smaller and then kind of building that girth as you go. Um, again, what you want to do when you're doing these outlines and, and this black, you want to make sure that the paint um, is really smooth. Um, so again, with me, my paint is drying very quickly being outside, so I'm adding quite a bit of water to the black paint I have here. You might want to get fresh black paint. It's up to you. I want to put water, but again, I don't want it to be like super runny. Like I, if it's too runny, it's not going to be opaque. Um, or it might run down the whole canvas, which has happened to me in another paint session. So, um, and again, you can fix it. So nothing, nothing's horrible. We can always do something with it, but trying to avoid having to deal with that. So let's um, figure out where we want his little like deer bum to be. So he's basically like top part of his body, like his bum and his front part here is, is above this horizon line. And then the bottoms of his legs and his legs stick in just below that line. And then the head pops in around here and it turns back. 
So let's think about where we want that to be. Okay, and I'm just gonna get make sure my brush has good paint on it. Okay, all right. So let's get that deer bum going. So it's kind of like it's about here, and it curves down, and it goes into his leg. So it kind of curves down, right? And then the leg then from here comes out. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do right now, but the leg. I'm gonna bring this across. Okay, we're just gonna bring him across. It kind of goes almost straight-ish. Okay, I'm not gonna go all the way I want it to go. I'm just gonna go there. And then I'm gonna go below, kind of where I want the neck, and then it kind of comes out a little bit. And then we come down into the leg that's in the foreground. That is in the snow and it's thin, so we're just gonna make it like that. Okay. Now the body is not very big, so he kind of goes like there, I would say. So that's how thick we want him. We don't want it to be any thicker than that. And then that first, that leg in the front is gonna come down like this. Kind of like a Y. Why? Why, leg? Why? Okay. There we go. Okay. And then this back leg is also going to come from here. It's wide and it's also like a big Y. And that's going to make an angle and it's going to come thin to the back leg here. Okay. So we have the form of the body right now. No promises, it might still turn out really shitty. I'm not sure. I mean, bad, sorry. I'm sorry, there's kids watching, my bad. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring that other leg here back. Okay, this one back here. It's kind of bent, and then it kind of, from there, just kind of comes into like a zigzag. Because animals have legs that zigzag and look weird for some reason. I find it easier like not thinking of it as an animal and just looking at it as lines that go in different directions. And I find that helps me a lot when I'm doing things that I'm a little scared of doing and I don't want to mess up. Okay, and this one we're going to bring a line that comes out like a straight line for the top part of his leg. And then it kind of just comes down and it doesn't come all the way down. Like he has his little foot up because he's adorable. Okay, and it's a little thicker here and then it stays pretty thin down there and then his little foot comes back so I'm just gonna put a little dot almost like a dot like that cool and I'm gonna just give this a little bit of a dot and I'm gonna give this a little bit of a dot and that's okay I think and if it's annoying guess what you can just put a bit of snow on top of his feet and he's in the snow you can't see his feet so the feet look really weird just bury him a little bit in the snow it's fine it's fine. He's just playing. Okay. Um, now, let's get the neck going. So this neck is just another line. Okay, that line got a little bit weird. And then this part kind of comes up like so. Okay. Now let's, so this head is just straight. Okay. And then it kind of comes down like a little triangle. Okay, and I'm just going to fill that in a little bit. Okay, and it goes kind of flat. I need more paint and water on my brush. Okay. Oh, maybe too much. Okay. And then I want this ear to come out. Okay. And then I want it to come down. So there's his ear. Oh, I'm scared. I'm gonna dab it and it's gonna get weird. And then I'm gonna just have his other ear come out this way. Oh yeah, his head's a little bit weird, but that's fine. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fill him in once I have that base of where I want him to, to live. And I'm happy with the size of him. Okay, so just fill it in like you're coloring. Okay, his ear looks kinda weird. 
His back looks a little bit thin. I'm just going to make it a little thicker. And then bring this up slightly like that. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's okay for now. Okay. I'm going to add his little tail. So the tail just kind of comes out. And I'm, not, I'm just going to bring it back. So just, just slight touches to that. The antlers as well, they're easy to do, but you need to make sure that your brush is going to cooperate with you. So thin brush, um, paint like ink. So black paint, smooth but not like dripping. And you want it to get control over how you want those antlers to go. So one antler is going to come out here. Okay, there we go. The other one's going to be like here. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice and thick, of course. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to like touch a little bit. However you think these are growing. Okay. Try to be cautious with that one because that one's definitely a little bit crazy. It's thick on this side for me. I'm trying not to let it. Okay, I think I'm not going to touch it anymore because it's kind of funky and I don't want it to be weird. Okay, um, since we have the black going, let's pop in those birds. Okay, so we have one that is flying, soaring as one like this. We have another line that comes down. Another line that comes up and out as far. And it's like an M. It like legit looks like an M. And then I'm just gonna like put a body in here. So I'm just gonna like touch my brush and just kind of like give a, a resemblance of like a body. To me it always kind of looks like a creepy like alien thing flying in the sky, but that's okay. Um, and then, then I wanna put this one that's just like soaring. That's like a V shape that and then again just a little resemblance of a body of some sort like that and then again on this side this one's gonna be a little bit further back but he's also gonna have like an M kind of thing going on one wing might be a little bit higher maybe a little bit more angles like that and his body is just gonna be like that there we go they kind of look like creepy like hornet things <laughs> I'm not sure There we go. Okay, so you can decide how you want to do that. I feel like this one is a little too thick at the top. You want it to be a bit thinner at the top and thicker as it goes down. Like it should, shouldn't, those look kind of weird. I think that's why they kind of look like, like insect wings versus bird wings. So it should be like going to points on the sides. Okay. Okay, I hope you guys are still able to follow along and enjoying it so far. Okay, so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna let the deer dry before we put on the little white highlights. Oh, and you know what I also forgot? It's also kind of snowing in the background. We have like little white dots all over the, the background. So we're gonna be putting those in too. But first, um, let's put in the shadow for the deer. So the same way we did the trees, we're gonna get, try and get the same color. If you still have that color on Perfecto, try and get similar. If it's slightly different, it's not gonna be a big deal. If it's glaringly different, it's gonna be noticeable that it's not the same thing. So try and keep it similar. Okay, make sure it's nice and easy to be smooth. Okay, and with this one, because it's right down the center, they're gonna be pretty darn straight, okay? So let's, let's keep that in mind as we do it. Okay, so this line is just gonna, and they're gonna be thin too, because they're not trees. Okay. So that's one. Two. Okay, I think I kind of want to just give that a little bit more of a base. There we go. Okay, this one's three. Okay, and this one is slightly, like it's a weird shape because it is slightly bent. Okay, so we're gonna kind of have it come 
out. Okay, then in, and then down. There we go. So you can just darken up the shadow if necessary. I'm noticing I need a little bit of darken up. So there you go. Okay. Now let's go with the white. Um, my deer is almost fully dry. So let's start. I'm going to start with putting just some snow in the background. I'm just going to use my fine brush. So a fine brush again. Oh, I'm creating the shadow on my own painting now. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to get white. And I just want like it to hopefully make some nice little dots of snow we'll kind of put snow in the background here Just touch it a little bit I don't want them to be super uniform I want them to be a little bit different sizes and stuff There we go. There we go in there, in there. Okay. okay, cool. There we go, it's snowing in the painting today. It's actually like not super hot today, which is nice. Well, at least not here, I don't know how it is where you guys are. Hopefully you guys are having a nice day. Okay, cool. So now my deer is pretty much dry, so I'm going to paint some little details on this guy. So a few little things, so there's Okay, so I we want to emphasize a few of the things on his body to kind of give him a bit of highlight. Okay, so again, similar, I'm going to just make sure that the paint is on the brush and it's nice. So, first of all, here, this kind of, this connects to this, oh shoot, it's too watery, hold on. I don't want it to be that watery. Okay. So I just want it to emphasize this line there. It's a little bit too thick still and I want this line to be emphasized here. I want to put a little emphasis on the back here. I'm just going to put a couple of little dots on the bum area like that. A couple different sizes too. I want to emphasize the head here. Curve. I'm just going to touch the ear as well, there, maybe I'll do it on this side too actually, and the neck, I want to do a little bit there, he's turned a bit, there we go, okay, there we go, I think I'm happy with him, okay, so that, I think, I'm just going to take a quick look to make sure I didn't miss any elements, is pretty much that. All right, so there we go. So there is our completed painting for Deer Spotted. All right, I'll snap a picture of it too so you can use this as a reference. And I also had put my original, or the one I did yesterday, that's, they actually turned out pretty darn similar. So that's pretty cool. So that's the one I did in advance. And here's the one that we did today, which looks really nice. It looks beautiful, great. And so I'll take a picture of that and then we can, um, wow, I'm just trying to grab you so I can talk to you. Ha, there you go. All right, so um, what we'll do is I'll um, take a picture of it and I'll put it on the comments so you can follow along to that one. And um, when you're done yours, please do the same thing because I love to see your painting because that's like my most um, favorite. Oh, there you go. I paused it by mistake, but we're still good. Okay, good. So, um, so that's done. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad this worked out and my power supply was strong and so was my reception. 
And um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, like I said, also the Hat Bright Camper is also available, so you guys can take a look and, and follow along with that. Um, that was a pre-recorded, so it's good to go. Um, and I'll have another option for you on Tuesday. I'm also thinking we'll have, um, I'd like to do a live session on Canada Day. Um, I have this really nice painting that I found that I'd like to recreate. So I will post that up um, when I get back, probably either Sunday evening or Monday. Um, and then if anyone would like to join me in doing that, um, please do so. All right, guys, so have a fantastic rest of your day. Great weekend and um, enjoy the weather. Thanks again. Bye everyone.